not to go on a tangent here, but they just um, said that Ivan is the wildest guy at the table. If you are known to be the wildest guy at the table, then you definitely want to three bet your absolute best hands preflop because your opponents aren't going to believe you, right? Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan Little, and I'm here today with a very fun hand from the Party Poker Millions $25,000 buy-in High Roller Tournament. This hand features Ivan Liao, who has about 69 big blinds in the middle stages of this tournament, and Phil Ivey, one of the absolute legends of the game, super crusher. I played with Phil Ivey a few times, and... Uh, I don't get excited very often when I play poker, but I get excited when I play with Phil Ivey. It's like, uh, it's like a dream come true to some extent, but in a very nightmarish way because he's really good at poker. Huge thanks to Party Poker for letting me use this footage. Make sure you check out their YouTube channel at youtube.com slash TV. They have all sorts of great final tables. Oh, so make sure you check it out. One. Yeah. This is Ben Heath. If you don't know him, I love Ben Heath. Him with a couple of suited cards. I'm saying he wants to get involved as well. Yeah, his hand just plays well. He's got no. So, in this hand, what happens pre flop is Phil Ivy raises it up with the King 10 offsuit in the hijack seat off his 39 big blind stack. And that's what we saw. Perfectly fine and standard. Falls around to Ivan in the small blind, and he decides to just call the pocket queens, which is very, very tricky. Very, very trappy. I would basically always three bet my best hands from the small blind unless I knew Ben in the big blind was going to be absolutely insane. And you know, Ben gets insane every once in a while, like all the good kids do. But I am virtually never calling here. I'm just three betting every time. Um, if you know Phil Ivey's raising like especially wide and he's going to be really, really weak pre-flop against a three bet, then, eh, you know, maybe you could justify calling if you think he's going to play weekly against the 3-bet, but will triple barrel off very often if you just flat call preflop, then maybe that has some merit, but you pretty much always want to be 3-betting your best hands, especially ones that are kind of vulnerable to being outdrawn, like uh, pocket queens are in this scenario, right? Like we see he has 57% equity, which is good, don't get me wrong, but, you know, it's it's, it's still quite vulnerable. So anyway, you want to 3-bet your best hands. A reason to squeeze, like a hand like King Jack off would be a good hand to squeeze, 6 do suited. He hits his hand, he can feel pretty good about it. And the, tr whoa, both have a, sp oh man, yeah. wow, Phil got a pretty special flop for the King-10 off. And Ivan can't like what's going on here, although he does have the Queen of Spades. So, flop comes, ace, 10, two, three spades. This gives Phil Ivy the nut flush draw and middle pair, gives Ivan pocket queens, under pair, second nut flush draw, very good hand as well. And Ben has a bottom pair, but that is trash here. So, gets around to Phil Ivy. They go check, check, as they very often will on these ace high boards. And Ivy should be betting here pretty frequently. I actually don't hate checking it back with this hand, because if you bet and get raised, it's pretty miserably bad. And you do have to expect Ivan to have a lot of decent big cards calling in the small blind that did not necessarily want to three bet and face an all in, right? Um, so I don't hate checking it back, but betting's also perfectly fine. If you do bet this hand and get raised in Phil Ivy's shoes, you're not folding, but it is a scenario where I think checking is also reasonable. He does bet, though, 15,000. He does go for a small bet, which I like, because that's going to get called by Queen of Spades a lot, and Jack of Spades, and um, Jack Ten of Hearts, even, right? All these hands that are drawing very, very thin. So if you are going to bet this flop, I like a small bet size from Phil Ivy. A little... Perhaps surprising to see Phil bet this one, but maybe, maybe not necessarily. But a second pair and the nut flush draw, maybe one he can check back if I decide to bet it. I mean, Ivan can definitely call with some weaker hands as can Ben. Oh, man. Easy call for Ivan, right? He's not trying to put in a raise here because if he check raises the flop and gets action, he's, he's usually not loving it. He's going to be against an ace a lot of the time or a flush. Also, he could be against ace with the king of spades, which would be a nightmare. He could be against a flush already, right? So in this scenario, Ivan has a very clear marginal made hand. And that's going to result in him just check calling. I actually discuss situations like this a lot at my training site, pokercoaching.com, because they come up very frequently. And if you screw this up, you're just going to be lighting your money on fire. If you're not already a Poker Coaching member, we are having a New Year sale. Make sure you check that out at pokercoaching.com slash New Year sale to get 
a great discount on Poker Coaching Premium. Oh, dear. Turns to seven of spades. Gets paid. Nightmare card for Ivan. And now, when Ivan checks turn, as he's going to do every time, this is a spot where Phil Ivy just wants to bet an amount that allows him to pretty reasonably go all in on the river. So pot's 75,000. Phil Ivy has 205,000 left. So in this scenario, notice if Phil Ivy bets, let's say, 50,000 on the turn, two-thirds pot, and Ivan calls, the pot's going to go up to 175, and Phil Ivy is going to have 155 left going to the river, right? For, you know, three-fourths-ish pot, which I think is nice. This is a situation where I do think that is probably the play. I think maybe you can even bet a little bit bigger on the turn. Because in this scenario, what are you trying to get called by, right? Whenever you're in a scenario like this, you always want to ask, which hands am I trying to have call me? And right here, we're trying to get called by a queen of spades, which is not going to fold, a jack of spades, which is not going to fold, and then sets, right? Sets, if, if he has sets or two pairs, um, you know, you don't really care if those call or fold, and you, don't, you also want to charge them the maximum, right? So I like a pretty big bet here from Phil Ivey, setting up this all in on the river. Look at that look. He's just thinking about <laughs> He's just like trying to look not interested. And he is like, I have the nuts versus the wildest guy at the table. Not to go on a tangent here, but they just um, said that Ivan is the wildest guy at the table. If you are known to be the wildest guy at the table, then you definitely want to three bet your absolute best hands preflop because your opponents aren't going to believe you, right? Sorry to go back to that, but I really do think just calling the queen's preflop is a really, really big mistake because if you are active, if you're aggressive, your opponents are going to think that you are bluffing a lot. And if they think you're bluffing a lot, they're just not going to fold. Like for all we know here, maybe Ivy raises, Ivan three bets. Phil Ivy just rips it all in preflop or something or decides to call and ends up putting in his money very poorly. But instead... Ivan lets Phil Ivy hang around cheaply and end up making the nuts, right? Which is not what you necessarily want, especially when you have a very loose, aggressive image. Anyway, back to Phil Ivy. 45 is the bet. He goes 45. I think 45 is probably a little bit small because notice now if Ivan calls, possibly go up to 165 and Phil has 160 left, I think you'd rather bet just a little bit bigger on the turn um, because also this is a spot where if Ivan does have, let's say, pocket nines, um, with a spade. He's always going to call the turn bet no matter what it is, as long as it's reasonable, right? But he's not necessarily going to pay you on the river. Whereas, well, in that scenario, you want to just get the pot bigger immediately because, like, he's never folding a spade, right? Whereas if you bet smaller on the turn and then all in on the river, which I have to presume is what Phil Ivey is going to do, um, he's going to be able to more easily fold because he's going to be getting worse pot ons on the river. So I think Phil Ivey should have gone just a little bit bigger. Again, Always got to be careful critiquing the absolute best players in the world like Phil Ivey, but I do think this is a spot where a slightly bigger bet size is ideal. Evan, of course, will be going nowhere with the second nuts. Ivan's, of course, calling. Again, no reason to raise, right? Because if you raise, what's going to wow, give you action? This is a dream scenario for Phil. Right? I mean, this is just a question of how much he bets is how much he's going to win, right? He set up a pot size river show. <laughs> yeah, and it's just... Man, the board uh, does pair, but that's still... That shouldn't really change us, right? Because Phil's not betting a set or two pair on the turn that sizing, is he? He's, mm. he's checking those no, backs. No, no, so. for Ivan's perspective, just thinking if Phil could think, you know, Ivan somehow could find a boat, but it doesn't matter. He's got yeah, the nut flush, he, and he, has he knows he's deuce. getting called by queen of spade, jack of spade, and... All right, so River is the Two of Hearts, which is actually a pretty bad card for Phil Ivey because every once in a while he now loses to like a weird pocket tens or pocket twos, but you know, two's not all that likely. Uh, pocket sevens is very unlikely. Pocket aces is very unlikely. Although I think aces is a more reasonable slow play preflop than pocket queens. Um, and this is a spot where you have to ask, if I jam it all in, will my opponent call with the Queen of Spades or the Jack of Spades, which is what we're trying to get called by? And... Against good players, strong high stakes players, you definitely want to shove here. I like Phil Ivey's play a lot. But if you're playing against like really, really weak tight players who are not going to properly assess your range and they're going to look at this two and think, oh no, he could have ace two. But like uh, Jeff Gross, the commentator said here, he doesn't really have ace two or pocket tens or anything like that because he's checking back on the turn, right? Um, if your opponents can't really figure that out, 
In that scenario, you should maybe even consider going smaller. So pot's 165. Maybe the right play would be to bet like 100K or 80K against really, really weak type players. But against good players, calling station E players, people who know they have to get in there and battle, I like the all-in. <laughs> now, around to Ivan. And Ivan saw this going differently in his head. Yeah. He saw a, oh, a trap turn into a yeah, just limp tough queens. situation. Just flat the queens, pardon me. So what I want you to do from the small. is I want you Makes. to pause the video here and ask yourself, what would you do in Ivan's shoes? And type it in the comment section below. Would you call the all-in or fold to the all-in? This is an important point. Take a second, pause the video. I'll wait for you. This is a pretty dicey spot. Against good world-class players, I think you just have to make the crying call. That said, if you think your opponent's not going to find the adequate amount of bluffs, I think it's at least reasonable to fold in this spot. And I get emails all the time where people ask me the question of, what do you do with this second nut bluff catcher when your opponent goes all in? Almost always, it's a hand like this where the opponent does show up with the one hand that beats them, right? And you can't be results-oriented. This is a scenario where... Yeah, you are going to run into the nuts some portion of the time, but more often than not, well, maybe not more often than not, but more than the uh, required 33-ish percent of the time based on the pot odds, you're going to have the best hand. You're going to have the best hand 40% of the time, something like that. I'm not actually sure Phil Ivey is running too many insane bluffs in this scenario, especially if he's playing against someone like Ivan who... You know, I've never, I don't, I've never seen Ivan before. Um, maybe he's loose aggressive calling station E. If you know your opponent to be loose aggressive calling station E, you should probably not run quite as many bluffs, right? And if that's the case, we're on this weird leveling war where we have to ask, is Phil Ivy just playing GTO? Is he playing in a manner that is trying to exploit Ivan and that he's mainly value betting? Or is he flipping that on his head and just like drastically over bluffing because he realizes Ivan's going to realize all right, it'd be insane to bluff me here, so therefore I should make big folds. And I think for the most part in scenarios like this, I'm not saying this is what Phil Ivey's doing, but most people just don't bluff often enough because they expect to get called. And if you expect to get called, and if your opponent thinks that, that you expect them to, if, if your opponent thinks for, that you expect them to call you, if Ivan thinks Phil Ivey expects him to call, Ivan should now start making really big exploitative folds. And this is actually what a lot of the very best loose aggressive players do, is they play all sorts of small pots, cultivate an insane image, and then when all the money goes all in, they realize their opponents think, all right, they're calling every time, right? Therefore, Ivan should start making really big folds. And again, I, I don't know the dynamics at this table, but there are certainly merits both ways for folding this hand. In general, from a GTO point of view, Ivan cannot fold this hand, but we're not necessarily playing GTO poker here if Ivan has cultivated this maniacal image that perhaps typically does not fold. If your opponents think you typically don't fold, they're more likely to be value betting. If they're more likely to be value betting, you in turn should find bigger folds. Listen, he's got a banner on the wall outside. He's won an event here. He's using two time mega. I think he's going to find it. I think he's going to find a fold. He might. I mean... What do you think he's going to do? I don't like the call, but... Look at this. That's a mock face. Fold. Wow. Oh, Mr. <laughs> Liao. Ivan Liao. Phil's got to feel sick. <laughs> you got to feel sick whenever you have your opponent set up, drawn dead, and somehow they find a fold. But <laughs> what can you do? Sometimes they find a fold. That's me for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Huge thanks to Party Poker for letting me use the footage. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, click the like button, click subscribe buttons below. Also, feel free to leave a comment for th the types of content you would like me to be making here on my channel. I read all the comments and I want to make sure that I'm giving you the content that you want. So make sure you leave me a comment and let me know what you want and I'll do my best to give it to you. Good luck in your games. Have fun. Make sure you check out pokercoaching.com slash new year sale right now for a big discount on Poker Coaching Premium. And I will talk to you next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want more strategy lessons, pre-flop charts, and interactive quizzes, make sure you get your free 
membership to PokerCoaching.com right now at PokerCoaching.com slash free. I'll talk to you next time.